Well, hello, Horizon family and friends. We are continuing our video journey as uh, the younger minister, I like to call myself younger, the young one, Joe Franks, is interviewing the patriarch, Jim Stevenson. Uh, Jim was the one who founded Horizon Church 23 years ago or so, and two and a half years ago, I was privileged to come back, and he brought me on, and I've been able to partner with him. So I've been interviewing Jim, just trying to grab some, some wisdom from the past and put some things on video to remember. One thing that I've noticed about working with Jim is he's a man of prayer. I don't even get to see his private prayer life, whatever happens in the early mornings as he gets up with his wife. and They have their routine as far as exercise and playing the piano and eating breakfast and getting in the Word and praying. But I get to see Jim in his public prayer life, not only from the pulpit, but in small groups and as he leads session meetings. And he is always keeping his eye and his ear towards the, his flock, knowing how to lift them up in prayer, and he's consistent about that. And so that's kind of the direction that I wanted to go in our question today, because uh, knowing that Jesus Christ would have us be a house of prayer, and he says, pray without ceasing. Jim, I want to ask you this question. As you have ministered here, and as the Lord has taught you to pray, do you have some answers to prayer that come to mind quickly? Some things that you think about where you're like, God did that, and I don't want to ever forget how he used prayer. Yeah, that's a great question, Joe, uh, because I think we need to tell our children this. We need to show our children ways in which God has answered our prayer, where it's beyond coincidence. That it can't be explained away that you know in your heart of hearts that you talk with God about this, and he was pleased to give you a yes answer to, to your uh, request. As I answer the question, I want to weave some personal uh, prayer answers to prayer along with church ministry ones. I think when we came to Greenville 38 years ago now, uh, we had been out of the housing market for a number of years because we had moved from very economical Dallas, Texas to very expensive Chicago, Illinois and we didn't have a home there and we came here at age 30. We had two young children and I had started working part-time uh, real estate in the area and I was working for Mitchell Road Presbyterian Church part-time as their director of music. And I, I just felt that uh, we should try to get in the housing market again. And uh, so I began to pray earnestly and I was trying to sell real estate. When you get your license, it takes a while to build relationships and, and get listings and actually see them happen. I can remember getting down on my face very earnestly in my office and just asking God, Lord, would you let me get back into the market? I had bought uh, early in Texas and we sold it to move to Chicago and then uh, inflation was rampant back in the late 70s and early 80s and that was just a personal request. I wanted to be a good steward and I wanted to be able to move into a home. And I remember earnestly praying and putting some, uh, something before the Lord. Lord, let me sell these houses and they will be like a bonus to what I'm currently making and my regular income and let us then be able to get into a home. And you know, the Lord answered that prayer in just a couple of weeks. And I told my children that because I thought, you know, this is not coincidence. Uh, this is the Lord answering my prayer, being kind enough to let us in. He didn't have to, but it was just uh, something that I desired from a stewardship point of view. And then, Joe, I can remember here at Horizon Church, uh, us uh, meeting and praying about the future. After we had been five years in existence and we were at Greenbrier Elementary, I can remember praying, Lord, you need to lead us to the next step. We, we're in borrowed spaces. If you could give us our own place, we could get some traction and begin to move forward. And uh, I remember having a discussion with some of the leaders regarding that, and they didn't feel the Lord's leading. At least that was not the, the vibe I got from them, that this is the time to move, or that we have the wherewithal to make this move. And I can remember going away very discouraged from that breakfast meeting uh, five years in. This was 18 years ago and thinking, Lord, I think you're done with me here. I think we've laid a foundation, and I think it's time that uh, these good folks find somebody else. But I'm kind of, I need you to encourage me. I'm feeling this low. 
uh, I, I just want to know that you're remembering me here and uh, can you just speak to me some way? Do you know that within an hour of me asking, asking the Lord to do that, within an hour I got a call from a dear friend that really he, he was interested in my services in their church. It was a mega church in a city, a uh, distant city, and I thought the world of this person. And I thought, Lord, you've answered, you've given me a sense of uh, that I, you're not done with me, at least in your broader ministry. And then I got a call also from Reformed Theological Seminary where I had uh, gone to school and they were asking me to do something, to represent them in a fairly important affair. And I thought, wow, you did this within the space of 60 minutes. You heard my prayer and affirmed me. Well, I waited on the Lord. And as it turned out, uh, Horizon Church decided to act and to seize the opportunity to uh, purchase this uh, facility as it came on uh, available to us. And as the people responded and stepped up and said, yes, we can do this. God enabled us to do it. So even though I was open to uh, maybe the Lord making a change that involved Deborah and me and the family moving, he didn't order that. He just wanted to, I don't know, test our faith perhaps. But uh, the congregation responded and we made that move all in the space of uh, maybe a year from the time that I had prayed that prayer. And so that's a kind of a ministry personal prayer. But Joe, I can remember some time too, uh, sitting in this office and thinking about, Lord, you've called us to make and mature uh, and mobilize committed followers of Jesus. We haven't, doesn't seem that we've made any disciples lately. And I just prayed earnestly. I had prayed the night before, Lord, give me an opportunity to speak with someone who will be receptive to the gospel. And do you know, the very next afternoon, a gentleman came in, he had needs in his life, they were fairly urgent. And he didn't know me, he was actually going to Brookwood for counseling and he got turned around and he got in our parking lot. And I happened to be here and welcomed him into my office and he felt free enough to share with me uh, the needs going on in his life and I pointed him to Christ the gospel. And I had the pleasure of leading him to the Lord. The, the Lord had given me that opportunity within 24 hours to share the gospel and actually to see someone respond to it. And he walked with the Lord. Well, he was, he's still a, a good friend to this day. Uh, we saw him progress. He participated in men's groups. It was, it was a beautiful thing. So I've seen the Lord uh, respond in that way. And of course, when we've had the opportunity to anoint people with oil as elders, and pray over them. We've seen God sustain them to bring them through. And uh, that's been a great privilege as well. But uh, I just want to encourage you, friends, that when you have answers to prayer, please share them with someone. Encourage some Christian that may be uh, about to faint on their journey with Christ because they haven't seen in their own life answers to prayer. Share your answers to prayer and certainly share them with your children, your grandchildren. Leave a legacy that you know you know objectively from the Word of God that this is true, but you know it subjectively too because He has moved in your life. And so I want to encourage you to ask and I want to encourage you to act on your prayers. I want to encourage you to anticipate God answering and then I want to encourage you to accept the answer He gives to you and trust Him throughout.